I originally became interested in acupuncture actually as a pre-med student. Um, I, as I was going through my traditional organic chemistry and pre-med requirements, I also I went to a small New England Liberal Arts College so I had access to uh, taking electives. And uh, we had a, a very good professor at the time uh, who was a very good uh, uh, knowledgeable in Asian philosophy. And so. He really had, from the pre-med stage, I was starting to think about Asian thought and Asian approaches to, uh, to, to life in general. Well, my training in acupuncture is, uh, I received my uh, continuing medical education certificate from acupuncture from the UCLA School of Medicine in Santa Monica. Uh, the course I took is from the uh, Helms Institute, which is a course that's specifically designed for physicians who are traditionally Western trained, but who want to uh, integrate acupuncture into their traditional Western practice. Well, I've uh, I had knee surgery at three times, and uh, uh, I walked okay, but I have been limping a lot, and so I've been using the cane whenever I can. I used the cane because I was concerned about falling, and when I walked, I had to use the cane to to keep the balance because my balance was off. My situation was is I developed um, severe headaches, was diagnosed um, with um, my ventricles and parts of my brain were enlarged and I had to have a shunt put in my head. And after that took the pressure down, I still had headaches and they felt they were migraine related. And so they treated me with a variety of pain medicines and migraine medicines and they never took the pain away. My back problems started, I, it was a very sudden, one day I was fine, the next day I had severe back pain and it just started progressing, um, low back, down my leg. I was kind of skeptical that acupuncture would work because I wanted to, um, I'm, I've always looked at Chinese medicine and for other ways, I've used massage therapy and other things for pain control, but I've never tried acupuncture, um, and so I was, I was skeptical, but I was willing to try it because, and he told me that, you know, he would, you know, um, I would know in a couple sessions, a few sessions whether it would work or not, and um, even after the first session, I already felt better. I was feeling better. Yeah, I think it's working good. A lot better than I did, thought it would. First, I was skeptical of acupuncture. Um, You'd see it maybe on television or something like this, and I guess the Chinese basically developed it, but I guess I was skeptical because I didn't understand it, maybe. I had tried many different procedures. I went to a chiropractor. Um, I went to a back specialist. Um, and their first response was they wanted to do surgery, and I didn't want to do that. So uh, I had just happened to be in Dr. Maz's office one day and uh, mentioned that I had back problems. And um, I was willing to try anything before surgery. I tell him to go try it and uh, don't expect wonders right in the first couple of uh, appointments. It don't work that way. I would encourage them to do it um, because of the fact that what happened with me, I, I didn't realize that this was going to take care of my balance problem, which was really a, a severe thing at the time because I've been dealing with it for several years. Acupuncture is not something that you should be afraid of. It's not something that is going to be, it's not like a drug that's going to have adverse effects. This is something that's natural. It's not comfortable. I can't say it's painful, but I can't say it's comfortable. But you should give every natural choice uh, a chance. It's not that bad. I mean, it's just like a little pin, pin prick, and then some of them didn't even hurt at all. And um, it felt like um, some point, uh, points when he put the needle in, it felt like electricity 
and um, would send up, and there were some things like he said, getting the good chi and the bad chi out of your system. And I mean, some points he hit right on, and that chi would just fly through my arm. It was amazing. I would uh, try an appointment and see what you think, because it's totally different than what you th what you think it's going to be. And um, the ne the needles don't hurt as much as some people would think right away. Oh, needles, you know. And uh, some of them do going in, but they're okay. I mean, it's not life threatening. It's not a long time. <laughs> and I did encourage several people that had back problems to go see him and they had six or seven treatments and they were much better than what they were before. Dr. Mass, Dr. Massa, um, it, I felt very comfortable working with him and um, being a patient of his. He was always very thorough and, and took his time with me. It was just amazing how just little bits at a time, I started noticing a difference in my balance. And then before long, I wasn't using the cane anymore. Um, he did just explain exactly what he was doing every time before he put a needle in. He was always telling me where he was going. And, you know, um, it was just a very relaxing and, and environment. My, I even took my 13-year-old or 14-year-old daughter with me once, and she watched once, and she thought it was pretty interesting. I can't really say enough good things about Dr. Massa because he, um, he tried very, very, very hard to make sure that I was comfortable with everything. And when we finally knew that I just was going to have to have something else done, he was very good about referring me to the best surgeon he knew. He was very good about making sure I had all of the documents, the x-rays, the MRIs, everything that that doctor would need. So I really am a fan of Dr. Moses. He's, he's a very thorough, kind, good doctor. Um, it, it is definitely more effective for some things other than other things. Um, for example, the National Institutes of Health has come out with a consensus statement saying that for arthritis, especially degenerative arthritis, that it's a, quote, promising alternative. So certainly for headaches, I've had at least 75 80% success rates. For chronic back pain, I'm going to say I'm in the 50 to 60% range, better than a coin flip, but certainly uh, compared to what other alternatives are out there, that's pretty good. Um, I've had pretty good luck with treating uh, plantar fasciitis. Um, I've had a good response to treating acute injuries. People think that acupuncture only can be used really for you know a chronic condition. I've had this for so for long that boy, I better I, I've exhausted all other alternatives now. I use acupuncture, but um, acupuncture is actually fairly effective for an acute knee sprain, uh, an ankle twist, uh, 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 acute trauma. Very, I've, I've had a fair amount of success using acupuncture for chronic sinusitis, vasomotor rhinitis. People can't control their sinus symptoms either from allergy or just from infections that keep coming back. But it just depends on what you're trying to use it for. Um, certainly I'd say the painful conditions I've had very good success with. The study that was done, and I believe it was out of a reproductive endocrinology clinic in Colorado Springs that was presented at an international acupuncture conference in Washington, D.C. that I attended, that in reproduction endocrinology clinics, acupuncture significantly increases a woman's chance of uh, trying to get pregnant, especially if she's using in vitro uh, techniques. And that's progressed to the point now where I think if you asked any reproductive endocrinologist in the United States, if you're not doing acupuncture on your patients, you're not meeting standard of care. And I never thought that I would, well, as I did acupuncture in my career, that not incorporating acupuncture into a traditional Western medicine treatment would mean that you're not meeting standard of care. I want to show you what an acupuncture needle looks like. These are not like any needles that we use for syringes or IVs. They're very small, thin and fine. They're bendable. They're sterile. Uh, I never use an acupuncture needle again. Once it's used and it comes out of a person, it goes into a needle box and goes away. Um, they're solid, so they don't have holes in them. And so they're much less irritating to the skin when they go in compared to a syringe or an IV.
Regarding uh, acupuncture insurance um, reimbursement or coverage, um, that is pretty much all over the map based on the insurance company. Um, my understanding is that at this point in time, Medicare and Medicaid uh, do not cover acupuncture. Um, the private insurers are, again, all over the map. Uh, what I, I'm trying to work with patients to get them pre-certified. Um, I've had some cases where the acupuncture uh, is covered 100% by an insurance company. I have some cases where they'll cover 50% of it. I have some cases where they'll cover 15% of it. Um, so the way, uh, and it depends on what you're trying to use it for. Um, the person who I used it for, for chronic sinusitis, their, their, their insurance company said that's just too experimental, we're not going to go there. Um, headaches, they have a tendency to say, oh, migraine, headache, uncontrolled, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll cover that. So it depends on the indication and the insurance company.